Hey, good evening. It's Tom Christie again in the workshop. And I was thinking as long as I'm working on this uh, decoy, I'll go ahead and talk briefly about keel and weight and flotation and how I put the keel together. You can see I've, I have a walnut keel. You can use any type of hardwood. You don't have to have a keel. You can just put weight on the bottom of the decoy. Um, I use a keel on most of my decoys. Right now I've just taped four ounces of lead on the bottom of this keel. And notice that I've put it up front. Most puddle ducks, you're gonna have to put the weight further forward because with this tail up high in the air and not much surface area, the decoy tends to drop in the tail just naturally by the geometry. So you need to have weight further in the front normally. Again, that's not a thousand percent, but just a general rule. So I've taped the keel on. I taped what I thought, I thought uh, four ounces would probably do the job on this particular decoy, especially since I hollowed it out. So it's gonna uh, flip over easier. Uh, in competition, these decoys have to self-write in a tank of water, so they'll put them in upside down. So you need to test your decoy. If you're going to compete, make sure that it self-writes. So I've done that, and uh, I put a video together on flotation. You can check that out. I don't want to duplicate that same effort. But you can see I've kind of temporarily taped the keel on. That gives me uh, where I think the position should be, and it allows me to reposition the keel a little bit if it's not floating exactly the way I want it. Also notice I've got a line all the way around the decoy where I expect the water uh, flotation line to be based on the pattern and again on experience. So I just test floated this decoy I got lucky on the first shot. I had the weight position correctly, the correct amount of weight. The keel's in a good position. So now what I can do is, uh, oh, and when I floated the decoy, I was right on that water line, dead nuts all the way around. So that's, that's what you're looking for. So now I'm just gonna take an awl and mark the location of the keel screws. So I have that nailed down. And then uh, I use strap lead. These are decoy anchors. This is from Northern Flight is one company that makes these. Uh, these are eight ounce strap lead. I can cut them to size easily. I used to melt my lead and pour it into keels, but I didn't like all the fumes and the, uh, the fumes mainly. So I've long time ago went to cut pieces of lead and I put those, I'll show you how I put those in the keel. By the way, I did have a question. Uh, do you need to seal the decoy before you test float it? And absolutely you do so that the water uh, doesn't soak into the wood and make it swell. Now I've got the keel removed. I know where the keel screws are gonna go. Those are marked on the decoy. Now I just need to capture the position of this lead. And, uh, you know, I can eyeball that and kind of know up here where I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is use the Forstner, a three quarter inch for, Forstner bit and drill down to create a pocket to put this lead in so that it's embedded in the keel. I like that design. I like it keeps the keel nice and clean. One thing to note, this lead is hanging low on the keel um, and that gives a lot of um, torque leverage because the lever arm is longer with this weight lower. So it creates more force to tip the decoy over. When we reposition the lead into the keel, it's not going to be as far away from the decoy. And so that's gonna create less turning torque for my old engineering days. 
Uh, but again, through experience, I know that uh, I'm still going to get enough turning torque when I embed these inside this keel in this position. I just mentioned that because I know that through experience, but you might get fooled if you're um, experimenting like this and you're on the borderline of being able to turn the decoy over and then you embed it and all of a sudden the decoy won't self right. So just keep that in mind. This distance makes a difference. That's why on some bigger decoys you want a nice deep keel because it gets the weight clear down here and then the torque lever arm is quite a bit longer and that's going to create more force to turn the decoy over. So I'm going to use the Forstner to create this pocket that I can drop this lead into from the top and I want to drill that down so it doesn't pierce through the bottom of the keel. So we'll do that now. All right, I've got my three quarter inch Forstner in there. Now I want to use the depth gauge again because I don't want to drill too deep. So I'm going to go right as far down as I can go and set my stop there so that I don't punch through the bottom again. But I want that pocket to be as deep as possible for that uh, turning torque that we talked about earlier. The farther down I can get it, the better off I'm going to be. And I've made my marks up on the top, so I'm just going to drill these down in the center. So basically we've milled a, a pocket in the keel. We kept the bottom of the keel intact and now I can insert the lead weights in that pocket. So the lead weights will go down in there and then I'll use some epoxy to fasten them in position. And then I use a little piece of Tupelo to close the lid here and make sure that's sealed up because we don't want water getting inside of the keel. Mixing up two-part DEFCON epoxy. Just going to put that down in the pocket. Make sure it's coated good down in there. Then I did take these apart because I don't want any water between these pieces of lead. Got to work pretty quickly because of the, the quick drying DevCon. I've got my lead in there and I did cut a little piece of Tupelo as a cap. I'm just spreading the DEVCON around the opening area so we get a good seal. Again, I don't want any water getting down in this pocket.
pretty good fit. I'm just going to take the remaining glue and spread it on top of the plug. As with all things, this is just one way to do it. It takes a little more effort. Um, a lot of people just drill a hole and melt your lead and pour it in the keel. And that's a great approach as well. I just like the this approach a little better for me. Now I'm gonna get a, t a rag and make sure I wipe that off so there's no glue protruding above the keel and we'll be all set. Just a quick shot of the finished keel with the weight installed. Now it's ready to put on the decoy. Now we're ready to mount the keel. I've gone ahead and drilled two screw holes in there based on the all marking that I did before. I've got some clear silicone caulk. I like to dip the keel screws or roll them in that caulk before I drive them in. And I also like to take a little of the caulk and put it right around the, the screw holes. Not a lot. But it allows, it makes sure that there's a good seal around those openings. It's important for a hollow bird. You could use a drill for this. I just prefer a hand tool so I know how much torque I'm putting on those screws. Put them nice and tight. There we go. So that's one way to put your weight in a keel, get it in the proper position, and get it on the decoy. I've got a little bit of silicone squeezing out here, and that's what I want to see. I will take it off, but that way I know I've got a good seal around that screw hole. All right, just a short video today, but on an important topic, how to wait and construct your keel, and I've at least given you one way to do that. There are many ways to put weight in a decoy or on the bottom of a decoy, whether it's a pad or a keel. Uh, but until next time, Tom Christie signing off. Thanks for tuning in.